Okay, so I'm not necessarily one for writing articles uh, per se, um, but I do like to do some videos and uh, I'm kind of a math guy, so I set some stuff up and I just wanted to present a little bit here. You know, I guess if, if this is my 10th article, then so be it. Otherwise, I'll figure out something else. But I just, we just got done with this Devi auction and I wanted to compare and analyze how the Devi went versus how the rookie auction went. I was very intrigued by some of the things I saw going on. Uh, so I just wanted to present these numbers, show them in uh, chart form, and then maybe bring them back over, discuss a little bit of what I'm seeing, what what trends kind of hit my brain when we think through these uh, examples of what we've got going on right now. So we've got a rookie auction that finished about two months ago and a Debbie auction that just finished. And the two price points of, of certain point, certain times of the prices that we have in there, uh, how much people spent on certain positions. It was very, very intriguing to me. So let's uh, pop over to my screen here. We'll analyze this and I will show you this chart here. This is rookie versus Devi dollars spent by position. So I'm going to have to try to sort through this and show you uh, a couple of the things that are odd. I'll just scroll up here so you can see. Look how few Devi D tackles and, and rookie D tackles and Devi DNs and rookie DNs went. And you know you can see it down here. Okay, yeah, we sure we had Chase Young, a, a pretty much a quintessential player, went a lot higher. Only one de defensive end from Devi and he went for 47. Our D tackles, there really wasn't a far cry from that, uh, what, what we saw in the regular draft. Safeties, also very under uh, underrated I guess or, or underappreciated in this format so people didn't spend any money on that you'll notice that in neither of these auctions were there a cornerback that was listed so those are the numbers there I, we can scroll back up I just want to take a peek next at uh, the linebackers so the linebackers you've got your initial draft uh, you know pretty steady drop off as we average those out and then at the um, in this Devi auction, there was hardly any. And I believe one of the linebackers that was chosen was a rush end. So, you know, there's always a little question mark there. So linebackers, noticeable difference, but very few, like defensive players in general, went in the uh, Devi auction. So there, there's not a lot of correlation, I don't think, at those uh, particular positions. But then we can get over here to the uh, quarterbacks. So we have quarterbacks for Devi and then our quarterbacks for the regular auction. What I want to show is that, man, the crossover point here between Devi position four and uh, the rookie position four, there was a point where it became cheaper to buy the fourth rookie off the board and then it became cheaper to buy the fourth Devi. And these trends really continued and were substantial. I mean, at at 12 here, we're still at 60 something dollars for for that uh, quarterback. So, not every one of these positions went. So the these are guests are theoretically their high dollar. But if they do really well, and there's more positions available in the future, what you're going to see is that those numbers could go up. So, third copies could be a lot more expensive for these younger uh, quarterbacks here after a year. Now, I think that that's very intriguing to me. Yes, the high dollar rate there. These are the things I look at. What what was my peak rate? So to get some of these higher guys, I had to pay an average of over 400 to get a Joe Burrow. But to come over here and get um, Trevor Lawrence and Justin Fields, I only got a discount of about $100 for uh, Trevor Lawrence. And between Justin Fields and uh, I believe it was Tua that was second in this one, between those two, I get, what, a $40, $50 discount? So those are the types of things that really intrigue me. Was it overspending? You know, if you got your guy, it's never overspending. But to me, I don't see a lot of particular uh, value in having those Debbie players when the drop-off is so small, especially when I got a, a Herbert here, and who knows which one of these guys is going to be Herbert. Right, some of these are going to be spectacular failures, and we just wasted our money. But that's Devi, and that's really intriguing. Then we get into our running backs. So 
here's your rookie running backs. You can see, boom, that's where the money was spent, right? Rookie running backs, the top six all, well, top five all went for over 200, nearly 250 on average. And then we get into our Debbie. It was a little bit less pronounced than that. Excuse me, uh, running back rookies. And running back Debbie was this color here. So we've got our first one starting at 235, and then it drops off. But we have a very, very gradual decline, and we start to meet here around 8. So the question is, you know, did our top 8 Debbies, were they really worth more than these rookies that we saw go in the draft? And on some of these rookies that went, you know, at the, at the later point, these were total flyer, late round picks, maybe not even uh, undrafted free agents. So we really only saw in the regular rookie uh, draft 10 running backs go. But we take a lot more shots at running back and 14 of them go. Uh, well, 14? Excuse me, not 14. I, I got, uh, that's where my colorblindness really comes in sometimes. 22 of the running backs went off the board in the Debbie. So you can see a lot of people are willing to take these crap shoots, crap shots uh, at different players. I mean, all around the, the 50 to, uh, to, you know, maybe a little under 50, maybe a little over 50, but you're paying the 60, $50 range for these guys and it's crap shoot. Some were one copy, some were three, some were two, but that's a lot of running backs that went in that Devi auction for, uh, for really what it's, what it's worth. So to me, that's very intriguing. Um, there, you know that your running backs are going to be tougher to get. That's a substantial climb. You're running back in a Devi all the way up to your running back in the rookie. You might have to pay. You might be able to take two flyers for the price of this one, right? 160, 240. You still don't add up to your number one rookie next year. Now, granted, are the rookies there? Are the Devies there? This was a really, really strong rookie class for running backs. So maybe you start to say that you're only going to see one or two in this range each year. So maybe that that decline, yeah, it's there for the number one, but maybe it's a smaller gap in the future for these, these secondary running backs and, and third, fourth running backs off the board. But that's, that's a pretty cool deal. The safeties, again, we have barely any of them taken. Uh, tight ends wasn't a whole lot like you know you can grow back up here and see not a lot of difference i mean we're pretty much you got what troutman and commit i'm guessing there for our rookies and then the ones people took a flyer on here not much difference in price between what was paid in the rookie draft so there was a this was a down year so people are thinking that maybe the rookies aren't that good there's still two or three that were very very fine specimens in this uh draft plus only four got nominated so very intriguing our final one is the wide receivers. And this one is like almost flat. I mean, there's a few up here towards the beginning that crest above 100, but then it just barely drops there below 50 as it goes in 21 wide receiver Devies are taken. And then when you look at your, uh, your wide receivers in the draft itself, this is the most intriguing one to me. There's very few spots here where there's really a big difference between these wide receivers and what was taken in the Devi. Um, and this was particularly one of the things that I was I was wary of. I didn't overspend on wide receivers in this because I, I overspent a little bit in the rookie draft. Uh, so I think I got lucky to um, insulate myself from this situation. But is it really worth going after those wide receivers and potentially only saving yourself 50 or or $100 if you happen to peg them? You know, and that's if you get them right. To me, that was where one of the spots where I just chose not to take much risks. Um, I feel like my wide receiver core has enough youth and talent in it that I'll be I'll be okay without or you know with having to battle for a Jamar Chase if I have to, uh, if I'm really struggling or I want to. But this is a very intriguing analysis, and it was fun for me to look at and see you know where these differences are um, to go back and and take a look at at the rookie and Devi and where the money was spent and. Um, you know what people's strategies were who who was actually using those devies and who was trying to who was trying to get the um, rookies before the devies and then who switched and tried to get the the devies only and who's got devies next year because there's a lot of people with with just a tremendous amount of devy money next year which i think could be a very big advantage so anyway that's my little video article and 
hopefully it means something to you guys. Just a little analysis I like to do on, on player positions and through rounds of auctions and such like what we just did. Thank you.